was easy. And I was a kid. Your parents I, raised you Mormon until you were like 15. Mm, no. Well, my dad. My dad yeah, did. Yeah, dad my dad. Totally I mean, my dad. My dad yeah. le ended up leaving. And but my dad's story now is that he. That my dad's story is that he never believed because my dad wanted a mission. My dad comes from a very Mormon family. My mom's Lutheran. And he worked for the. Yeah, and my dad. Yeah, my dad like worked. My dad like started reading when he was on his mission and all of those things. And so he became very. My dad is like one of the smartest people I've ever known. Everything he reads, he retains. And he, and so he, um, everything. That's why he can't be Mormon. Right. right. <laughs> That's why I don't work at everything. That's Mormon. why I don't get, I don't get people who are like, are into Mormon history and say they understand it. And I'm like, well then if you do, then I don't understand how you can be Mormon. Yeah, yeah. Like, and, and, but he just... You know, I mean, I, I always, my parents, my dad never though, I've never had those things like, we ne there was never a family home meeting, there was never anything like that. I just kind of myself was with my friends. And just like, you know, things like that. So as I, when I decided to go on my mission, I remember being at, I remember being at the airport, my dad like, whispering in my ear like, you don't have to do this. Like, what are you doing? And I was like, dad, this is really inappropriate. <laughs> like, I'm at the airport, I'm leaving. <laughs> I've been in the for two months. And he's like, you don't have to, I was like, hey dad, you're really, you're freaking out. <laughs> you know, and so I left in, um, uh, and I, in Poland, I mean, that's just a whole other story. I mean, Poland changed my life forever. It taught me how to love people. I, I don't think, cause I, luckily I went on a mission where I didn't proselyte a lot. It was all about teaching English and helping people, and like, I was very lucky. And planting seeds. Planting seeds, you know. <laughs> and, but, um, I, I, and I go back every year, I've taken him back. This will be our, his second time coming with me, and we always go back, and, and I go and see all the people I love. and. Um, so I'm really grateful. I, the Mormon Church gave me a foundation and gave me a, a want, a more of a want to believe in something. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. And one of the things I really liked, see, this is why I was like hoping you'd be a director, because like I'm thinking now that I'm like all over the place, like the river and now this over here. And, like I have to even like finish one freaking thing. I'm such a mess. Uh, I. Back to the river. <laughs> um, you know, I, it was weird, and this is a really personal thing, but I, I mean, if, like the, the one um, guy said on here, I guess if this could ever help anyone that feels help, hopeless and empty and lost. Um, when I was, when I actually went up to this river, <laughs> standing there, and I, it was so silly, because I remember thinking, like, this is so stupid, like, what are you doing? And this is going to be painful, not to mention, I can't even stand it when I get a paper cut. And I'm like, this is, like, ridiculous. But I really believed, because of that blessing, that, the, that I had, there was no other way. There was nothing else, because if I came out, he told me, I'd lose all my friends, I'd lose my prosperity, I'd lose, my, I'd lose God. I mean, if I'm going to lose God, then to me, I just, there wasn't a point. And if I was never going to have, and I didn't know what was in store, I didn't know that I was going to meet Nick, I didn't know that I was going to, you know, be able to feel that because I had never felt that and so I um, so as I was standing up there I um, I just started yelling like at God like I was pissed like I was like I hope you're ready to see me face to face because all of this like talking into nothing isn't working anymore because I'm not getting any I'm, I'm not feeling anything back no chills no little goosebumps, like, there's nothing coming. So, like, I need, and so I was just yelling, I was like, so here's, here's your chance, you know? Because I'm going to remind you when I get there <laughs> that I was standing at the bank of an Epping River, like, come and tell me what to do because I have no more options. I don't know what to do. And, um... And whether, I mean, I wish it would have been like some like angelic moment where I hear, heard this like loud, like thundering voice, but like something within me just, I, and, I, and I heard it, and it may have been, just been my own voice, but something inside of me, like right before I was gonna do it, 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 was, it was part of the, maybe it was just even the wind that hit me in that moment. And it was the inner self that I always wanted to be, that Benny I always wanted to be, just said to me, hey, Benny, it's not your trial. It's not a trial, it's, it's other people's trial. Like, it's not yours. Like, being gay, like, this, you are gay. This is who you are. This is how I made you. Stop asking me to change you. Just stop it. It's annoying. You know? And I felt it. And I don't, and maybe I just told myself that. I don't know, but whatever it was, it was loud and clear. And that was the, the most my inner self had ever talked to me. And then I just, I just remember, like, 
falling into the snow and just sitting there breathing and shaking and being like, I cannot believe that I almost did this. And then I, because I had taken the bus up the Snowbird Canyon, parked my car at the bottom, and like planned this big lie where I was. And so as I was walking down this canyon in the freezing cold snow, like reflecting on like what could have been and how selfish that would have been and what and, and how much it would have done, it wouldn't have done any good. I would have hurt so many people. And and it was in that moment. And then when I was watching one of the other guys on here, and maybe it was you or someone else said on it, said something to the effect of, when you want to kill yourself and you want to take your life and remove goodness because everyone has some sort of goodness in them and remove that from the world then that structure of the LDS church or any organization is no longer doing what it was set up to do and that really hit me when he said that because that's what it reminded me of when I was like that's so true because it shouldn't make you want to kill yourself it shouldn't make you feel alone it shouldn't make you feel it should give you peace no matter who you are it should give you. The, it should make you want to be a better you, a better somebody, a better anything. And it wasn't doing that for me anymore. And it was, in fact, it was drawing me away from God. It was, it was pushing me away. And, and um, so, I mean, I once that happened, and and once I met Nick, um, life changed radically. I mean, it, everything that was, everything that was, what everything that they that my bishop had told me was going to happen, um, kind of. Like, it was like direct opposite. My job fell into place and I, and I felt like I became, you know, successful and then I finished school and I was like happy all the time and I wanted to help other people. I'm picking up litter off the free. I'm running in the mountain and picking up litter and doing things that I never wanted to do before, things that I didn't like think about, you know? And, I'm not, and I still like, I mean, I'm just like everyone else trying to make their way and everything like that, but I mean, there's something to be said that you, that I became a better me, you know, and whatever that means to anyone else, I, it doesn't really matter because I'm the only one that knows how to decipher between the old me and the new me. And what I know is this is who I've always wanted to be. And 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 and, and the, the I think the weirdest thing about coming out and being honest with myself is is how much closer I am to God in everything. I pray differently. I pray differently, like I talk to him. There isn't like this scripted, like I talk to him and I don't feel guilty anymore about the way I talk to him and the way, or, or, or the way that I, I run my life because I, I don't hurt other people. And I don't, and, and, there, and, 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 and I love the other thing, what you and I talked about the first time, that there's a way, there's life after the Mormon church or, or, or outside of it. It doesn't even have to be after that. You know, it, there, there, and, 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 the difference between, for me, and this is me speaking, you know, personally, when I was in the church, I was surviving, like I was constantly just, it was survival mode, and, and now I'm thriving, like it's surviving versus thriving, and I just, I feel like I'm, I'm literally thriving, and, and want to, and I want to get everything out of life that I could, whereas when I was in the church, I was constantly like trying to like keep up, and like what can I do to be straight, and what can I do to change myself, and it was exhausting, how can anyone help other people when you can't even help yourself and the lying oh my gosh I can't believe how much I lied because when you're lying about who the core of you is you lie about everything where you are who you're with what you're doing the, what you believe what you, I mean it's a lie 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 and then you can't even keep up those lies and pretty soon you forgot what you forgot what you've lied about and that was when it became so messy for me. I was like, I can't do this anymore. Surrender. I was like the little person out in the middle of the ocean with the white flag. Like, someone pick me up because I'm done.